Hi, my name's John and welcome to Ask John D. Jones. In today's episode, I'm going to talk about a topic that I've been putting off for a while and that's comparing Umbraco CMS and EpiServer CMS. Now, fundamentally, uh, when I finished uni many years ago, I got into .NET CMS um, development. I was lucky enough to live in a part of the country where one of the biggest CMSs in England existed. So I went from there, worked with loads of clients, and that grew on to me working in agencies and getting experience with a lot of different CMSs. Um, so this is sort of one of the reasons I wanted to do this video, because I'm probably in a bit of a slightly different sli situation than a lot of developers. Um, most people I come across, they're either sort of Umbraco experts and they just focus their career on doing Umbraco, or maybe Sitecore, or you know, EpiServer. And there's not that many developers that I've come across that sort of tend to specialise focus between all of them. So in this episode what I'm going to do is just talk about you know the differences between Umbraco and EpiServer, pros and cons and maybe why you should think about using one over the other um, and what I like about each one. So the first, um, let's kick off with what are the, sim the similarities between Umbraco and EpiServer. So 2019, unfortunately both are um, ASP.NET so at the moment you can't create a fully .NET Core website with um, one or the other. I'd guess that the Umbraco roadmap to .NET Core is probably going to be a little bit quicker than um, EpiServer, and that's because, which I'll get onto in a minute, you get a lot of additional products with EpiServer, it's not just a CMS. So in terms of you know, tech, um, you know they're both sort of similar, you're both going to have to get use um, ASP.NET, um, they're both running on you know Microsoft platforms, so you'll be using SQL Server, you can bung both of them into Azure. Um, you can both um, install either of them really easily and quickly through NuGet. And Braco, you can just get through the normal NuGet feed. EpiServer, you have to install like the EpiServer NuGet feed into your Visual Studio library. But after that, it is just uh, a few clicks of the button and you can get a website up and running. If you want to learn how to get Umbraco and EpiServer um, up and running, go to my website, johndjones.com. Over there, there's two uh, tutorials that will help you. Thought I'd get a quick little plugin. So, we talked about um, a lot of the similarities, you know, they're both CMSs, you can both, you know, create pages, they both have like admin features, you can set pages to private, you can schedule pages, you can delete them, you can do versioning, both do multi-language. So there's a lot of, um, you know, similarities between them, as you'd probably guess from any CMS. Now, things get more, a bit more interesting when you talk about money and cost. So uh, Umbraco is an open source product, so that means it's free. You can download it free, you don't have to pay any money whatsoever. EpiServer on the other hand is a licensed product and the license fee for like an individual like you and me is probably a little bit hefty. In terms of you know if you're working in a big organisation, um, I've looked at IT budgets and you know EpiServer's fee, you know it's not too bad. There's definitely things which are more expensive that you have to pay for in the world. So. Straight off, I think if you're an individual and you're looking to create your own personal brand, website, maybe you want to create a blog, you may want to create you know, a little e-commerce site or whatever you want to do, the you know, Joe Average, you're probably going to pick Umbraco because you're just not going to be able to afford um, EpiServer. So that's sort of like a big, um, you know, depending on your budget, if you have very little budget, you'll be working probably with Umbraco. If you've got a bigger budget, you might consider EpiServer. And this also, in my opinion, goes along with um, contracting rates and freelance rates. If you look at the Umbraco work, um, contracting and freelance work, the rates are a little bit less than when you're working with the big enterprise CMSs, and that's generally because the types of clients and types of projects you're going to be working on. And Braco can support massive websites, and there's no really limitations on it. The thing is, when you get into sort of big company levels, they sort of like to have all like the extra support, and they like to have legally binding contracts. And you know, some people just won't use open source software because you know of security, blah blah blah. So straight off, you have this sort of mix of things. So EpiServer costs money, like why should you pay that extra money? So with EpiServer, you don't just get a CMS, you get like a suite of products. So you can buy uh, EpiServer as a CMS, and then you can buy like a, an extra search bolt-on. Then an extra search bolt-on, it lives in the cloud, it's called EpiFind, 
and with that you can have um, a more powerful search. So say you have 10 websites, some don't have to be EpiServer, um, you might have you know, data within a database. In theory you can then create some uh, hooks and some add-ons and you can make sure that you can start spidering all this different content. So this means that if you have a site search, a site search is really important to you, you're not just limited to your website, you might be able to include you know, all your subsites or your system sites, like whatever you want to. Now another big thing with about EpiServer is if you're building uh, an e-commerce website, it comes with EpiServer Commerce. Now EpiServer Commerce is, you know, it's got a shopping basket, it's got the checkout, it's got payment providers, it's got all that sort of stuff. Now it's not just an out-of-the-box functionality, EpiServer is definitely a framework, so if you buy it, you'll have to do a lot of coding, you have to do a lot of writing yourself to actually build your e-commerce store, but you know, that sort of functionality you can add on. Now on top of that, if you actually want to do e-commerce, you might want to think, oh, actually, how can I improve my sales? So EpiServer has you know, like an AI built-in sort of um, intelligent sort of bolt-on, and here, and here it can give you um, clever recommendations about you know, what um, people should buy. It might send you a reminder if you've got stuff stuck in your cart. So you can see straight away is that you know, there's, with EpiServer, you have the um, opportunity to bolt-on different packages. So if you're a company and you're an e-commerce website, EpiServer is probably you know a better a, a better idea for you because it, they can give you fully supported um, infrastructure, they can give you SLAs to make sure your website doesn't go down, and they can do you know all that sort of big um, serious enterprise level stuff which for individuals, you know, me sitting at home, tippy typing, like um, it's just you know I don't need that stuff. It costs too much money for me. So going back onto Umbraco, as a developer, um, Umbraco over the years has got a lot nicer. So I think back in the day, maybe seven or eight years ago, EpiServer was a really great product and hands down, you know, it was much better and easier to use than Umbraco was. And what's happening with you know, a lot of open source projects is the amount of people who contr contribute to Umbraco, you know, um, help the community, people do um, pull requests, and if you look at the last couple of releases in Raka, you can see that a lot of the community has actually been fixing bugs and doing small changes. This means that I think, in my uh, opinion, that in the next you know five, ten years, however long the product goes, I think their roadmap will get quicker and quicker because they've got more people working on it. Now, as I said, EpiServer, on the flip side, because they've got such a big suite of products, they've got a lot of integration pains. So, a lot of the time, they make a bit more slower progress. But because they have more products, that you've got a lot more functionality at your fingertips a lot quicker. So, in Umbraco, you might um, have to do a lot of the work yourself. You might have to code some stuff. You might have to find some third-party packages that, you know, a hobbyist home person uh, published. A backend might go to version 8 like they are shortly and then you know that person can't be bothered to update it and then you're stuck and you have to you know rewrite your website. When you're with EpiServer you know that that's not going to happen because they support their sort of um, software and their products so if you're using um, packages which are built by EpiServer you're sort of onto a winner because you're never going to have that sort of issue. Now one of the big things that I've been working on recently is a multi-language site. When it comes to multi-language, I'd say EpiServer is hands down a, a much better solution. Now the problem with um, Umbraco is you, the, the main multi-language, sort of out-of-the-box way of doing it is you might create like an English site and then you might create an American site and a French site. Now if you've got like 400, 400, there's only 170 countries in the world, if you've got like 50 different um, languages, that's going to be creating um, a lot of headache for your content editors. Um, one way around that is maybe using a third party package like Vorto. But again, the way it serializes data into your properties isn't ideal. It's going to make um, migrating later on a bit harder. On the flip side, EpiServer just deals with it out of the box. You don't really have to think about it. You can just create your page in English and then you just click a few buttons and you can create a French page and you can create all your content. So with EpiServer, you have the best of both worlds and it's sort of all out of the box so you don't need to worry about any third party packages. Now, personally, I sort of quite like that. Um, another thing which I'd favour EpiServer over Umbraco is the API. Now Umbraco's API has definitely got a bit better, but I still think it's lacking a little bit. So um, with Umbraco you can have one API and you can have like the, your eye content which talk back to the database and this can be a little bit slow. And then you can also have your eye publish content. And now your eye publish content is basically talking to content which is cached using Lucene index in your um, web route. 
So sometimes when you're building um, a rack of components, you need to consider about using different APIs. Maybe you need to switch from using one to the other. And sometimes it can be a little bit of a headache. I mean, it's still a great API, still pretty easy to use. I definitely recommend it. But on the flip side, EpiServer just has one um, API. So with EpiServer, you don't really need to worry about all of this stuff because stuff like performance and caching and creating writable um, objects and pushing back to the database, all of that sort of catered for in the back end and their API just works. It's sort of one of the really nice things. Another good thing about their API is they use the content reference model. So this means that you, um, again, if you're a big organization and you have data stored in multiple locations, you can create your own uh, custom data stores and you can import that content with an epi server so it then can be indexed by epi server find and it can do all that sort of great stuff. So, um, it might sound like I want an epi server high. Definitely over the few years there's definitely things that um, I prefer in Umbraco. Now the one good thing about Umbraco is the back-end UI is so much slicker now than EpiServer. I think EpiServer came out with something which was quite um, groundbreaking and it's quite clever. Again, this was like five, um, eight years ago using blocks. Um, with EpiServer, um, they're using the Dojo JS framework, which is now stupidly outdated. I mean, if you ask anyone, do they use Dojo anymore? Like most people wouldn't even heard of it. Unfortunately, you know, with JavaScript burnout, all that sort of stuff, if you're into the JavaScript scene, the amount of change which happened um, over the last five years is rapid. So any CMS or any product is going to have a problem if they pick up um, something, it's going to change. On the flip side, Umbraco uses Angular, and if you look at the stats from you know, st um, Stack Overflow, the most popular JavaScript um, framework, Angular comes on top. So. For me nowadays, if you're doing a bit of JavaScript integration or maybe you're doing like a content hub or you're doing stuff like that, the benefits of being able to use Angular and being able to customize the CMS, you know, are great. As I said, because the community have been helping, um, the Umbraco backend looks so much easier and slicker. And if you actually look at what's coming out in Umbraco 8 with the um, Infinity Editing, I think they call it, everything just looks like it's going to be a much easier backend experience. So considering that you're not paying any money, and you've got a great API, a great product, and the back end will actually be um, easier to use for smaller single language websites. You've got a good case for thinking about using Umbraco. So I said, I don't think, um, for me, it's not a case of should I use one or should I use the other? Is Umbraco better than EpiServer? I think they're definitely suited towards different markets and different types of customers. If you've got a big um, enterprise level, medium sized company, by all means, you might consider Umbraco, but if you're thinking about you want, you know, advanced search, you need um, the support, and for big companies, support such a big thing, and um, all that sort of e-commerce um, intelligence, all that sort of good stuff, you're probably going to think about, you know, going towards EpiServer. My personal website, JohnDJones.com, which I recommend that you check out. That is a um, Umbraco-powered website, which I've done myself. Uh, I picked Umbraco simply because I can't afford the EpiServer license. I've got something which is free, it runs in Azure, it works you know, perfectly, it does exactly what I want, I'm very happy with it. So, as I said, if, you, um, if you're on the fence and you haven't got much money, I potentially think about Umbraco, you've got nothing to lose, but um, in the future if you're planning to scale up and you've got big plans, of you know doing e-commerce stuff like that, EpiServer is probably a good choice to consider as well. So anyway, I hope that's uh, answered a bit of confusion. There's, as I said, it's same as everything in life. There's good points and bad things about um, each product, and there'll be things that you'll favour, which I might not. Personally, you know things like the code first. I'm back on EpiServer. Both now have have code first. I my preference is towards the EpiServer one, but I know a few people who prefer the Embraco one. But in general, you know, they're both great products. Um, my wish is, you know, I both wish they were in .NET Core, but hey, here's hoping. So anyway, I hope this has been beneficial for you. If you've liked it at all, um, please hit the like button or subscribe to this channel. I think uh, I'm on about 170 people. If I could get to 200 by the end of the year, that'd be great. If you want to be a legend, hit subscribe now. Again, if you want to learn anything about um, EpiServer or um, and Braco. There's about 300, 400 tutorials on my website which will teach you everything from literally how to install it to how to architect your website and great um, ideas. This channel is basically um, the ideas that I come are all sort of sponsored and come from you guys so feel free to email me, go over to my website johndjones.com, click the contact button at the top, um, leave a comment on my website or because this is YouTube 
hit as comment. I will reply to all comments, hopefully. So anyway, I hope you have a great day. Sorry it's been a bit of a windy um, video, but that's a break when you live in England. Anyway, until next time, catch you later.